Hey, remember when the Democrats and their media claimed to be worried about the lack of confidence in our democratic institutions? As of yesterday, a Pew poll shows that 74% of Americans are worried about the integrity of our election institutions, but it's not because of the Russians. Even before the election, the big tech companies were already working to censor their political opposition, but it really kicked into gear after Donald Trump ended up winning. Since then, anyone on any of the major tech platforms and to the right of Karl Marx has probably experienced some sort of censorship for their political views. My channel was shut down for three months without any explanation right after the election. After that, and literally during Trump's first State of the Union, YouTube took away my monetization for six months, again with no explanation. Don't tell me that wasn't done for political reasons. I'm not going to go into every example from all the major platforms, but needless to say, they're definitely targeting the little guy. Given the level of dedication that they've demonstrated in controlling the political narrative, it should leave any thinking person worried about their ability to participate in the election systems if they're in opposition to the dominant ideology of the company. As Dr. Epstein warned, who is a prominent liberal critic of Google, big tech companies can shift opinions and votes in numerous ways that people can't detect. So it really shouldn't surprise anybody that such a large and growing number of Americans are worried about the big tech company's influence on the election system. Dr. Epstein went on to say, their ability to influence the election makes Russia look like rank amateurs. One thing I've talked about a lot on this channel over the years is how the Democrats and their media set the standard before the election that to question election results would be an attack on democracy. Since then, by their own standards, they've been engaged in the biggest domestic attack on our institutions since the Civil War. I hate to sound pessimistic, but you combine that with what the big tech giants are doing to our institutions and you have a recipe for disaster. If nobody can trust the election systems, our intelligence agencies, the rule of law, or the so-called fourth branch, what exactly is holding us together? Stephen King once wrote, Panic is highly contagious, especially in situations where nothing is known and everything is in flux. The world we live in today is in flux, filled with a flood of information that's often as much gossip as fact, making it hard to know what the real situation is, making it easy for people to panic and make bad decisions. The only way not to get caught up in that chaos is to have a plan allowing you to avoid dealing with empty store shelves, long lines, and in the worst case, desperate people. Use today to prepare. A great place to start is storing food in your home. I'm prepared and I ordered even more recently. The experts at My Patriot Supply have told me that orders have now reached about 100 times the normal volume and they're shipping on a first come, first served basis. With this unprecedented emergency, orders are being delayed, sometimes eight weeks or more. I urge you to add your order to mine today. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithdronetech.com. Those that know what's coming are preparing today. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. That's preparewithdronetech.com. It's not all doom and gloom, though. Recently, a billionaire Republican and never-Trumper turned Trump supporter bought a major stake at Twitter and is now eyeing the CEO position. According to Fox News, a billionaire Republican mega donor has purchased a sizable stake in Twitter and plans to push to oust CEO Jack Dorsey, among other changes, according to new reports. Paul Singer's Elliott Management Corp has already nominated four directors to Twitter's board. The outlet noted that unlike other prominent tech CEOs, Dorsey didn't have voting control over Twitter because the company had just one class of stock, and he has long been a target for removal given Twitter's struggling user growth numbers and stock performance. It appears that Jack Dorsey's plans for ideological domination of Twitter is predictably backfiring on him. If you're hemorrhaging users and not getting new ones, you're losing capital. Who knew that banning people for stating undeniable facts like men aren't women would result in a tremendous loss of users? Back to the tech giants real quick. Do I think they'll meddle in the election? Absolutely. I mean, that's what they've been preparing for for the past three years. Outside of regulating them and watching them very closely or outright buying them like Paul Singer did, I really don't see how we can stop them. The most important thing is to just go out and vote when the time comes. That's all I have for today. Please like, share, and subscribe. You may have noticed I'm trying something a little bit different today. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you enjoy my content and you want to support my mission, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon. Subscribe 
star or just sending a donation on PayPal. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.